Welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God Online today. We're so glad you're with us. And Pastor Becky and myself have come to share with you in a moment. Pastor Brian and Pastor Andrea have lead us in worship. We are so glad. You know, we've had some great things happen over the last few weeks. Last Sunday, we finally got our Zoom started to uh, for our children's program. Right, and and right. that was yes. fantastic. I'm so excited about that. <laughs> yes. And uh, somebody sent in a treat for all our kids. And uh, mm -hmm. let me just say, if you didn't get a treat, give me a shout and we'll make sure you get one. I've tried <laughs> to include everybody, yes. uh, but we're working on that still. And uh, that's been good. And we want to make sure we're taking care of our kids all the way that's around. Sweet. And they had a great time together. I am excited about that. You know, yeah. we've also had a Spanish uh ministry okay. zoom going on week after week and they've been doing some great things there mm -hmm. and uh, our dear brother morales has been sharing the word of mm -hmm. god and even bringing a couple extra special speakers yes. at times and mm -hmm. they have been some great times of zoom uh wednesday night prayer meetings mm -hmm. we we've, we've shared with people also and those have been great uh, Pastor Brian and Pastor Andre are getting ready to start up young adults and also our youth and they're going to be doing some things that way. So we want to still stay connected. This is a hard day and age to have church. We understand that. But as much as possible, we'd like to stay connected with you and uh, keep connected. We'd like to see you face to face too. I mean, that's, yes. that's one of our <laughs> optimal goals that we have is to see people face to face and share with them. Uh, last Sunday's service was fantastic. Yes. Uh, I preached the same sermon three different <laughs> places. I preached it for Millville online separately. I preached it for Wyckoff online separately. And then I came in person and preached mm -hmm. again. And each one was different. Each it was one, def I, definitely different. Yeah, <laughs> shifted each time. And it, whatever God is laying on my heart is what I've been to lay that way and and uh, present to each person. And, we're so excited you're here today. We're going to be sharing in a few minutes about, and just one more, uh, I think this is the last one, I'm not sure. <laughs> shift your thinking, uh, even in the wilderness. Shift your thinking, even in the wilderness. And it's hard to even serve God in the wilderness, and it's hard to even begin to focus on God. But yet it's in the wilderness that God begins to teach us some things. And today, Pastor Brian and Pastor Andre are just going to move into a place of taking us into worshiping God. So why don't you join with them today? God bless you.
Thank you, Pastor Brian and Pastor Andrea, for leading us in worship. Yes, amen. We so appreciate you waiting on the, the leading of the Lord and choosing songs for worship. Just kind of melds together what God wants to do in people's hearts and lives each week. So we thank you so much for being faithful and sensitive to what God is doing and wants to stir up in people's hearts and lives. Amen. Thank you. You know, we want to uh, pray for the um, fires out in Oregon on the West Coast. We've had even personal family members have been have had to evacuate, and we just want to lift them up right now into personal needs before we um, go into our offering time. Father, we come to you right now. Lord, we know that from the word, you are the master of the winds and the waves. Lord, we need a wind. They need a wind to blow a different direction that would bring rain, that would begin to saturate the, the hills where the wildfires are, and the, even where it may not be flaming and flaring, but it's still hot and smoldering. Lord, we need a wind with rain to come and to just saturate, Lord, those mountainsides with rain to be able to stop the fires. Lord, there's so much devastation with the fire. People are misplaced, they've lost everything. Lord, I can't imagine. But Lord, I know that you are the God who restores broken lives. You bring and build beauty up out of ashes of, of lives and and tears and sweat, Lord God. You do that because you've done it over and over again in your word. We have so many examples of it. So God, begin to, to show these people that have lost everything how they can start rebuilding. Lord, and, and I know that to me this might be the way you do it and I'm not trying to tell you how to do it. But God, just send some people along to walk along beside them during this time. Maybe give them wisdom, maybe give them ideas of, of new things and building new memories. Lord, I, I know that at times like this, they rely on insurance companies to, to take care of it all. But God, begin to bring resources in beyond the insurance companies to help supply even basic needs right now to these people I pray and let it be hands that come that represent your love that represent you the body of Christ here on earth Lord and Lord I, I pray that you would strengthen the the workers there the firefighters and the everyone that's there the police and the first responders Lord strengthen them as they've gotten so weary and tired of fighting these fires. Lord, National Guard that's been called out, every aspect of whoever, all the personnel there, God, that you would just begin to strengthen them, I pray. And Lord, meet even their own personal needs as they've been away from their families for so many weeks and maybe stretching into months. Lord, meet their needs as well. Lord, and there's other needs. Lord, I know that 
that that's a hot spot, but it's not the only place here that has needs. People right around us have needs. We may know about it, we may not. Lord, we just heard of someone who lost a very dear loved one just a few minutes before we started this. Lord, begin to bring comfort to that family, I pray. Lord, show them, Lord God, that you are the comforter. Bring peace, Lord God, to their to their um, hurting. Lord, they're hurting right now. Yes, Lord. Jesus. that you would bring peace and comfort and heal that hurt I pray Lord we know that he their loved one is not suffering anymore but that still doesn't take the pain and the hurt away we feel when we lose a loved one so minister to that family we pray Lord, there's other people that have needs. Lord, there's, there's someone we know who recently fell and broke their ankle that you would touch them. Lord, you would touch that ankle. You would begin to cause healing to just flow right now in that ankle and, and restore even faster than the doctors thought would happen. And strengthen that ankle, we pray. Lord, there are others who have needs. Maybe, they're, Lord, they just feel so beat down and, and, all, and depressed and on the border of depression, Lord God, because of all of the, the things that are going on. God, bring peace. Reveal yourself as Jehovah Shalom in their life, we pray. Peace to that mind, Lord God, that is doing all these, well, what if, what if, and, and oh no, how are we going to do this? Lord, just bring peace. Lord, they're worrying about things that haven't even happened or the things aren't even in place for them to happen. Show them to just have peace of mind as they concentrate on you in Jesus' name. Lord, and we thank you in advance for victory, miraculous victory in your name, Lord God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. And you know, we would, we would be taking an offering that's right. We're we're still our mailbox is still working. That's our right. Postal service is still delivering. Online Thank you, is Jesus. Still Online is coming through, and just and people bring even Sunday when people come, they bring their gifts, and we've had some that have had to work, but they sent their gifts in, their offering, in with someone else that they knew was coming, and so whatever means. That's right. We're just so thankful for the faithfulness of. God's people and that God has proven himself during all of this yes. still to be faithful. That's right. That's right. You know, we have to continually think and be reminded about the goodness of God. The goodness and the faithfulness of God over and over again. You know, it's so easy to say, well, he hasn't done this, and he hasn't done this, and I haven't seen this, and I didn't get this answer to prayer. It's so easy to wallow in that stuff. But how about wallowing in reminding yourself about the goodness and the faithfulness of God? That he has been faithful to you over and over again. And Lord, we want to just lift you up today and lift your name up and praise you for your faithfulness, mm -hmm. for your goodness. Lord, that your loving kindness, Lord, we, we used to sing is better than life. Mm -hmm. And that may be hard for some to grasp. But Lord, you are showering down on your people blessings as we are faithful to you. You continue to be faithful to us. Lord, for the one who can't move past all the things you haven't done. Lord, just reveal yourself to them in a special way. Help them, instead of looking for the bad and, and the negative, to start seeing you as you love them. Mm -hmm. Even in those moments when they may not be so lovable, you mm -hmm. still love them. You still pour out your mercy and your grace over their life so that they will begin to say and see and sing about the goodness of God That's right. and how you have been faithful. You are faithful now, you've been faithful in the past, and you will continue to be faithful. We thank you 
for the tithes and the offerings. We thank you for, yes, for everything that has come in. That, Lord, it would continue to further your kingdom, to spread your kingdom far and wide. Yes. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, we've been sharing for the last few weeks uh, about uh, shifting your thinking. Yes. Pastor Becky started this off way uh, in the beginning part of August there, or middle of August there. Uh, then I sh shared about doubling your workload and shifting your thinking in August 23rd. And then on August 30th, we talked about God supplies our needs and shifting your thinking again on that. Last week, we talked about moving to a new norm or right. normality yeah. and, and, and <laughs> normal time and it's you know I don't care how you say it right. it's the new norm is one of those things that oftentimes we're looking at right now and I, I know a lot of people are having a hard time with even thinking about a new normal and but you know Paul shared that and he says come on guys you know it's sometimes we we base everything on certain things and we want to focus on those certain things to make it work what today I want to talk about even in the wilderness, <laughs> yep, I said it, even in the wilderness, shift your thinking. Mm. You know, and I, 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 every time we do one of these, I think sometimes we're tested on them. Uh, I know that your workload has doubled and tripled yes. as you went back yes. to school, but I want to talk to you about even in the wilderness, shift your thinking. You know, years ago, I was uh, with a, a group in our church back when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. and uh, we were part of Teen Talent Fine Arts Festival. Uh, we literally traveled to these regional competitions, and uh, one year we were only picked the state winners, and then we, we felt bad, and all of a sudden we got a phone call that the state winners could not make it, and so we had to go represent New Jersey and go down to the regionals, and it was down below Washington, D.C., and as we traveled down that direction, I was with uh, my Sunday school teacher at the time <laughs> and uh, another guy from the church and they were in the front seat and I was in the back and and because uh, I'm, I'm the, I was the smaller guy so I was in the back and uh, we were heading down and coming back that night it was late and I was getting pretty tired so I just laid down in the seat took a nap we were just coming to DC going around the beltway I woke up about an hour later we were still going around the beltway <laughs> I went back to sleep, woke up another an hour later, and I said, where are we? They said, we're still on the beltway. And they traveled that beltway three or four times because they couldn't figure out where to go. They didn't have the right maps with them. Uh, GPS wasn't around back then, so they were, they were lost, literally lost. Well, you know, the children of Israel struggled greatly with that, and they struggled wandering in the wilderness over and over again. I, I can't imagine what that's like, but I, sometimes I have felt in myself that I've been wandering in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And I've, I felt like, the God, you know, God, why do you have me here? What's this all about? And there's a scripture verse that I just want to head this thing off with as we begin to talk about that wilderness. And it's found in Isaiah, the 35th chapter. I know I'm not talking about Exodus there and uh, that whole journey in the wilderness. We'll get there in a second. But this particular passage, Lord gave me this week. And it says, the wilderness and the dry ground shall be glad. Mm. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the, the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. And the glory of Lebanon shall be given to you, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord and the majesty of our God. And the Bible talks about the desert shall, broop, shall begin to bloom wow. like a rose. Like a rose. Uh, you know, and this whole thought of... How can good stuff come out of stuff when we feel like we're going in all sorts of directions and all sorts of means? Well, I want to talk to you about the wilderness was meant to be a journey. It wasn't a permanent location. It's true. It was meant to be a journey. Yeah. Not the end means, just a path. And we're on a journey with God. I oftentimes teach that. We're on a journey with God. And we've joined this journey, and sometimes we feel like we're going around in circles like they did 40 years. They went around in circles, literally uh, circled the same mountain, and went around the same pathway. And I'm sure some of them looked at the thing, oh man, we're here again. But I think sometimes they were so lost in what they were doing, they mm -hmm. didn't recognize they had gone around that same spot again. Well, we're on a journey. 
letting go so that we can proceed on the journey is one of the biggest struggles. When they left captivity, when they left Pharaoh, one of those things they had to do was let go of Egypt. And if you notice, when they came out of Egypt and started heading towards, they weren't at it yet, heading towards the promised land on this journey in the wilderness, and they were headed towards that, one of the things they couldn't get off their minds was Egypt. They really struggled with getting right. past this thought that Egypt was still there. And uh, Pharaoh's mind had to be changed. In fact, ten plagues came along. And I've oftentimes said that one of the things that happened in those ten plagues was the fact that God was not only changing Pharaoh's mind, he was changing the children of Israel's mind. The Israelites' mind had to be changed. Pharaoh changed his mind back again on that last plague. You know, he's all set and he's all of a sudden letting go. And all of a sudden on that last plague, he changes back last second there. Uh, it took ten plagues to get him that that position of letting the people go. And all of a sudden he said, no, I'm not. Now let's go after them. and bring them back. And this is not good. This is not do that. And it took ten plagues. And so what does it take to guide them in this wilderness? See, it was easier for God to get Pharaoh to let the people go than it was for God to get the people to let Egypt go. Wow. They got off in the, in, the, yes. in the wilderness there, and the first thing they out of their mouths is, you know, Moses, you bring us out of here because you didn't have enough graves in there? Mm. And we were better off. We were better off before. I know that none of you have ever said that before. <laughs> we were better off before. I was better off before I even, I even came to Jesus Christ. And I was better off before I did this and before I did that. And people get lost in those things. Because in the midst of your trial and your, and your struggle, that's all you can see. They wanted to go back. And, you know, God gives us a new heart. Gives us a new heart. But what God doesn't do, God doesn't change our mind. Because the Bible says, you know, uh, to, to literally turn your eyes upon Jesus, to, to begin to put that focus and that mindset on Christ, whose mind is stayed on, right. on God and all those things. He doesn't change your mind. You still have a free will. He changes your heart. He cleanses you. And He purifies you inside so that you're in right relationship with God. That's what He does. But God can give us a new heart. That part's easy, but God's desire is that your mind and your focus and your will will change after His things and His ways. That's His goal. That is why we need to release things to God for change. You know, we used to sing the, the song, I Surrender All, and, and, and I, it's just so sweet to trust in Jesus and all those kind of songs. And, and there's some things about just surrendering unto God. Putting our trust in God is surrendering other things so that we can put our trust in God. Mind is stayed on God. Isaiah, the 26th chapter, verse 1 through 4 says, In that day this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He sets up salvation as walls and, and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, that the righteous nation that keeps faith, open the gates that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Now that's a, that's a title he puts on there. Righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Are you a righteous person that keeps faith? so that you can enter the things that God wants to take you into, maybe the next level. Well, verse 3 says this, You keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you. Now, stay, keeping our mind on Christ, we oftentimes talk about peace, and we talk about fear, and we go, go back and forth on that, and, and, and we want to come up with some simple answers to all those things. But the peace comes in as I refocus my mind. Yes. The peace comes in as I begin to focus on other things and not on all the, the stuff going on around me. Right. You know, I remember years ago we were, we were doing this radio program called Free the People from the Fire. And all of a sudden, I think the omen had come out or something like that had come out. And all of a sudden, all these teenage girls started calling in. They were scared to death as they began to watch it. And they were, they were freaking out a little bit. And the counselor, the girl counselor on the phone, because we had like 18, 18 lines and everybody was answering phones. And she just happened to get them. And as she began to take their call, 
uh, she began to talk to them and one girl said, you know, we're playing with a Ouija board, we're doing this, we're doing that. And they would focus on everything else. And the one girl had a little bit of biblical background, but not much. But she knew enough that she had turned on the radio and she turned to that station. <laughs> wow. And as she turned to that station, she began to focus in on the fact that she needed some help, major help in the situation. There's a lot of weird things were going on in the house that night. And that counselor worked to get those girls' minds back on Christ. God changed their hearts. But then they also had to work with the mindset and change the mindset. And the mindset began to change. And we watched a big miracle come across that household. I forget how many of those girls turned their hearts over to Jesus Christ that night. And it's not just about this fear thing. See, God's perfect love casts all fear. We always quote that real quick. But... Uh, we've got to change the mindset whose mind is stayed on him. I've got to keep my mind on Christ in order for this peace to come in. And so the fourth verse of that says this, uh, Trust the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. So keep your mind on him. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you and trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord is an everlasting rock. So I began to move in this wilderness, and as I began to go in this wilderness, my, my thinking, my journey, all those things come in the right perspective because I'm trusting in God. God had to change the children of Israel. Yes. It was a long journey of changing their lives. With a shift in our thinking, our habits begin to change. Mm -hmm. It begins to affect every <coughs> part of our being. The way we are, priorities begin to change. In this season, God wants to shift your thinking from focusing on yourself to focusing on God. Oh, yes. How I overthink sometimes. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Believing that I'm the center of the problem, right? Or the center of the situation. I said it right. Actually, the center of the problem. <laughs> but I'm the center of the situation. It's all rest on me. What about me? What about how I'm going to feel in this situation? This is the day and age when we oftentimes go into that, where we look at the thought that, it's all about how I'm going to respond to all these things and what's going to take place and what's going to happen all the way through. Oh, yes. Sometimes I overthink believing that I'm the center, believing that it's all about me. But overall, I need to move back because my heart's already been changed. I need to move my mind to the place where I focus on Christ. And in the wilderness, they had to move and shift their priorities. Do you realize that that wilderness situation was a moving classroom for them? That's right. A moving classroom in the wilderness. And it was meant to change their thinking. Forty years in the wilderness designed to change how they would react when they came into the promised land later on. Their whole mindset was totally changed. They faced something that was greater than what they could even imagine. And yet they went on from city to city to city to city to city and began to take the countryside for God and followed what God wanted them to do. Uh, God was teaching them constantly about new things. He was guiding them on new things. The trials we face are meant to, to help us change and mold our thinking. Max Licato's book says this, God will use this for good, he said. You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive. Don't despair either. With God's help, you will get through this. But it's more than just getting through. It's learning the lessons on the way. Last week we talked about Moses went up on Mount Sinai and got the Ten Commandments. But that's only a drop in the bucket for what God downloaded to Moses at that time. God downloaded uh, many of the things. Some say there's like 631 laws of Moses. Uh, so many details that we, they would need to follow. A portable classroom, so to speak. A time of teaching them, rearranging their thinking, getting them to think in a whole new direction than they ever had. They, had, they were familiar with the Egyptians and all their ways of doing things and, and how they, they loved other things, not the things of God. And God says, we're going to turn that direction. We're going to turn you this way. We're going to change your habits. We're going to change your mindset. We're going to change all those things so that you will serve me as the living God. Ten Commandments was one of those. 
laws about slaves, laws about restitution, laws about social justice, laws about Sabbath and festival, not just having a, a time of church or a time of keeping things holy in God, but also a time of festival, rejoicing and having those kind of things, a confirmation of, of God's covenant to them. Uh, contributions they would be giving to the sanctuary, the Ark of the Covenant, how to build it, the purpose, etc., the table of the bread, how to build it, the purpose, etc., the golden lampstand, how to build it, its purpose, etc. We find that all the way through the, the golden lampstands we find in the book of Revelation later on. That there's a tie all the way through Scripture. God's got a plan that is just incredible. And then it doesn't stop there. It talks about the tabernacle, how, how to build it, its purpose, etc., the bronze altar, how to build it, and carefully how you build it. Not just right. slap it together. God had a very uh, detailed process of how He wanted it done. Sometimes people think the church ideas are, well, we can just make that do. God says, no, I've got some details. I want it to be just this way. I want the finest, the finest of things. And we, we oftentimes find that in, in those beginning outline things that... Moses began to get downloaded from God. Yes. God, you know, the, the court of the tabernacle, how to build it, purpose, etc. The priest garments, how to make it, purpose, etc. Consecration of the priest, how to do it. The altar of incense, how to build it. The brazen basin, how to build it. The anointing and, and also not just how to build it, how to use it. Right. The altar, how to use it. The anointing oil and incense, how to put the right mixture there and how to use that and what we're going to do with that. The Sabbath, how to keep it and keep it holy. You know, the Sabbath actually relates back to the beginning in the Garden of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. As God created the world, six days he worked and the seventh day he took it off. There's, there's this rest thing that has to come or our bodies get worn out. Mm -hmm. You know, we double the workload. There's some place along the line. You've got to take that break and take that break in God and say, God, I need to focus in on you during this time. And these are just to name a few. <laughs> See, the journey is a training ground for shifting our thinking. When Jesus called his disciples, he called them, and it was really neat because Jesus says this to them, you know, Matthew 4th chapter, verse 18, it says, One day as Jesus was walking along the shore of the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, also called Peter and Andrew, throwing an net in the water, and they were fishing for a living. And Jesus called out to them, Come, follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Now, stop there for a moment. They could have said, You know, well, I'm sure we've got skills already. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. we're fishermen. In case you didn't notice Jesus. We're, we're fishermen. So we really know how to fish. And I'm sure we can take those principles and drop them over here. But see, when God begins to teach you things, He's going to go way beyond what you think it is and use it a new way. And there may be some principles, yeah, that start to float over there, but God says, I'm going to twist them, I'm going to change them, I'm going to reform them, because they're going to reflect my image, not what you've learned in the past. And the scripture goes on and says, And they left their nets at once and followed Him, a little further up shore, he saw two other brothers, James and John, sitting in a boat with their father, Zebedee, repairing their nets. And he called to them, come to, and they immediately followed him, leaving the boat and their father behind. They had to leave some things. They had to let some things go. Uh, that wasn't, the purpose wasn't to bring daddy along to take care of them at that no, point in time. No. Purpose was that Jesus wanted to teach them one-on-one -on -one, the same way he wants to teach you. The disciples never said, Jesus, you know, we've got great experience here. But for the next three years, and even for a lifetime, they were taught some incredible principles, and they would teach others the same principles. He would teach them how to care for each other, how to love one another. The journey was, was not meant to be easy. Uh, school is not easy. I've got a teacher here. School is not easy. You know, I sat in one of her classes the other day, and or today, and and I listened to it, and I was I was listening to it, and I was I was hearing what she was saying. I'm like, wow, okay, huh? Not quite like I had it back years ago. And they've got some time frames and some other things, and they've got to go from this to this, and, and do this next, and then connect with this, and go over here. I'm like, whoa! I need a map. 
How are they doing all this? But that's the way it is in our lives, in our walk with Christ. God's teaching us things and He's guiding and directing us all the way through. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials that you're going through as if something strange were happening to you. Instead, be very glad for these trials make you partners with Christ in His suffering so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing His glory when it is revealed to all the world. He'll teach you not only how to care for one another, but to go through the struggles as you journey on and you feel like you're just going in circles sometimes. And yet during that time, he's got open class, totally open class. And God is forming you slowly and teaching you. Yes, your heart has changed, but what he's changing inside of you through all the stuff he's taking you through like the fiery trials and the extra stuff, and you go, God, why me? I signed up for this, and I thought it would just be this, this great picture. And God says, we're going to form you into the image that I desire for you. God planned you a long time ago, and he wants you formed in his image, not your image, not your neighbor's image, not somebody else's image. He wants you formed in his image. Yes, your heart has changed, but he wants you to change your mindset. It took 10 plagues to change Pharaoh's mind and a moment to change it back. The plagues were used to change the Israelites' minds also. They wanted to go back to slavery. How about you? What do you desire to go back to? Well, let's wrap this up by reading something we read at the beginning of this series. And in uh, Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is any worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and seen in me, practice these things. And the God of peace is with you. You know, there's another passage there that I just want to, if I can grab it real quick, that it also talks on that whole thought there. And I think at times we, we go into this and we, we want to just say, you know, God, I want you to just change this around real quick in my life. Paul gives some really incredible things just before he says that. He says this, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I will say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything. Okay, I'm learning God, but I should be here by now. God, I've got X amount of years behind me, and my resume is X amount of long, and I should be already overcoming all these things. God's not looking at your resume. He's looking at your mindset as it's changing. He's changed your heart already, and He's waiting for your mindset to catch up to your heart. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So let it guard you. And let those things begin to follow through in your life that God desires for you. Yes. Shift your thinking. Okay. Yeah, I feel like we're in the wilderness right now. I feel like we've kind of gotten lost there a little bit. Yes. I feel like we're kind of <coughs> moved that direction a little bit and we're not going there all the way. Thank you. And we're, we're kind of hanging out there. But God wants to shift our thinking. He's got his portable classroom going. He's got those things all lined up. And he says, you know, I've, I've got this for you. I really do. I've got this plan I've had since you were in your mother's womb. Got all these things together. And I want to lead you into that. And that's where he wants to take you. And lead you into what he desires for your life. He wants to move you in those things. He wants to guide you in those things. He's got a portable classroom set up for you. And he's going to have you on the road. And he's going to have you doing stuff. It's more than a virtual classroom. It's a reality classroom in the things of God. And he wants to teach you his new stuff. That's what he wants. I'm wondering today if there's some things you're holding back and saying, God... You know, I, I, these habits and this thing and that thing, you know, it hasn't really changed. And, and you keep holding on and coming back because they're your easy clutch things. Easy grip on things. Easy go-to things. 
And it's so easy to move that direction. And yet God says, I want to change the rest of you. And will you be changed into the image of God? And we allow Him to move you in that direction. Maybe today you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You've never asked Him into your heart and life. Well, I'd like to first do that with you. And then I'd like to lead you in a second prayer to help guide you into moving and following God in His portable classroom. Would you bow your heads with me? And if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, would you repeat after me? And I'd like to help you find that new heart that God desires for you. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Come into my heart and life. Come into my heart and life. Change my heart. Change my heart. Give me new life in you. Give me new life in you. I am sorry for my sins. I am sorry for my sins. And I ask you to forgive me. I ask you to forgive me. And change me. And change me. All the way through. All the way through. I want to be part of your classroom. I want to be part of your classroom. I want to be experiencing those things that you teach. I want to experience those things that you teach. So instruct me today. So instruct me today. And guide me today. And guide me today. In your classroom. In your classroom. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. And I want to serve you the rest of my life. And I want to serve you the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Now, Lord, I ask that you will minister to others that have struggled. Yes, they felt like they needed to get out of this wilderness and kept trying, and they, mm -hmm. they feel like they're in a vicious circle and can't move in any direction. But, Lord, in the midst of all that, I ask that they will begin to find your joy. They will begin to find your everlasting joy that just yes. bubbles up inside of them. Lord, that someplace along the line, they'll just begin to find themselves laughing. Sometimes laughing hysterically. Because that's good medicine for their soul. It's good medicine for the body, Scripture says. Lord, that their mindset to begin to change even more and more and more. Lord, if they've gotten some bitterness in there because of situations and because of some things they've, they've faced in the wilderness. Lord, I ask you to take that bitterness away. Help them to release that, not grab hold of it, but to release that in you right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. from almost day one, we have sung some old songs at the end. And some of you love it. Some of you hate it. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you love it or hate it. I just want to sing a song today. It's an old one that uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither put together a long time ago. And it... Uh, it uh, It says a lot of things about us today.
Today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Thank you, Lord, for keeping each person. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you today his peace. God bless you. Till we meet again, we're looking forward to those times. If you need to connect with us for Zooms or anything that way, just send us an email, give us a phone call, whatever. We'd like to contact you and connect that way and give you the passwords to those and help you join us on those particular things. God bless you to next week. Thank you.